Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we are going to be visiting Jupiter as we're going to go to kind of an old what-if idea that I've done you know a long time ago in the past where we turn it into a star but this time following my recent video of making the uh, future solar system around the red giant sun we saw that Jupiter's moons naturally adapt once they start receiving temperature you don't have to edit them all the all you do is put something warm near them and they will start to build atmospheres and melt on their own so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make Jupiter into a uh, basic red dwarf star and I'm going to see how the temperatures of that little red dwarf affect the uh, Galilean moons especially. And I want to see, uh, see how that plays out. So the rest of the solar system, I'm not bothered what changes that does. I'm purely focusing on Jupiter and its moons here. I mean, of course, if Jupiter was a star, the inner solar system would get wrecked. Saturn's orbit would probably be a bit upset as well. We've done that all before. But this time, I want to fully focus on the moons. Okay, so step one. We need to make it into a star. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the good old tools here. We're going to go material. And we're just going to shoot a lot more hydrogen into it and make this guy bigger. So we need more mass. Let's, um, we'll give it a substantial amount of mass. I think Earth, what's this? Earth masses, Jupiter masses. Um, maybe we'll do it in sets of 20 Earths. I think that's a substantial. I mean, Jupiter's 318 Earths alone. So let's just start adding a lot more Earth mass of hydrogen to Jupiter. So we'll slowly start to see. we just speed up the time a bit. Oh, look at the size of that. Ooh. I think the density just changed there. It got a little smaller, didn't it? Right, so let's continue just adding Earth mass to Jupiter until eventually it becomes... It'll be a brown dwarf first. You can see the temperature starting to warm up. So add more mass. Eventually, the sky is going to become either brown dwarf level. It looks like it's going to do a brown, become a brown dwarf now. There we go. Yes, yeah, so that's now brown dwarf level. Let's continue shooting more mass into it until eventually we get a little red dwarf out of it. And that is the star we're going to be using. So there we are. But yeah, I'm not going to be focusing on the rest of the solar system. It's purely the Jupiter moon system here. So let's continue. Assuming it's around 80 Jupiter masses, we should start to see uh, a star come. Come on, a little bit more. There you go. So there's your basic little red dwarf. Now it's gaining a bit of size, isn't it? There you go. Obviously, very dim luminosity. So where are I? Let's put the zone on. And there you go. So let's just delete the particles. Right, now what I need to do is, since you can't add moons, once it becomes a star, I'm going to basically cheat a bit. So I'm going to simulations pause. I'm going to plop a new Jupiter inside it. Click, select that Jupiter. If I can get to it. So simply just do this. There we go. Come out of it again. Add moons. So the moons are now around there. Delete the Jupiter. And then all I need to simply do is auto orbit. So let's go ahead and it's a simulation. I always get this one wrong, do I? No, it is tools. Then we go to... Where are we? There it is. Cool. Right, so that. And now when I press play... The moons should all just stick around. Yeah, there you go. So, they're all inside the red zone of this Haspel zone around Jupiter. How's that going to play out? So, again, it has upset the other orbits, but I'm not bothered about those. So, it's just the Jupiter moons here. Now, how is this going to play out here? I'm quite keen to see this. So, right. Slow down time. So, I think Io is going to be our first visitor one to look at here. So, there we go. So, we look around now. Turn off the goggles. Oh, yeah. Things are getting a bit of brat. So there we go. The sun. Nowhere near the light that the sun's. This is giving it way more light than the sun is. So turn this stuff off. Io. And then it's the same with all the Galilean moons. We're going to you can see Europa over there. All that composition they've got is now going to warm up. But I reckon a lot of these may just go straight to global greenhouse effect kind of world straight away. Because they have a lot of water. And that a lot of water vapor means big greenhouse effect. So there we go. So the orbits looking good. Europa. Callisto, I mean, they all have that material underneath. Carbon dioxide, all this stuff. Water, as soon as that gets a little too warm. Uh, so Io is probably the one we're going to look at first as it is close. It's 400 degrees straight away. Oh, look at Io. Whoa, that's cool. Oh, it's been torn up by the Rouge limit. Oh, I wasn't expecting that. Oh, dear. The power of Jupiter, Io. Oh, look at the state of that. <laughs> so, I mean, its materials are melting here. I mean, it's probably going to form a bit of an atmosphere, yes, but the whole moon is being destroyed. <laughs> so Jupiter's going to get a new ring system. Europa, how are we doing over here? Minus 153, but it is... Ooh, it's, okay, the Io and the tidal effects of Io now. I mean, Jupiter already has a lot of power on Io. The poor moon's already been squeezed. It's the most volcanically active world. But for this brief period of Io still existing around that object that was formerly a gas giant Jupiter... This moon, the tidal forces on this are going to be absolute hell. And the moon, I think, as this moon eventually does vaporise or whatever happens to it, I mean, the volcanic activity on this would be absolutely through the roof. 
look at the state of that. It is just... Oh, what's that liquid on its surface? I mean, what was going on here? Carbon dioxide. Oh, water. I mean, it's all gas now. Sulfur dioxide. Liquid sulfur dioxide on it. Io has been absolutely shunted. And you can see the, it did lose mass. It's not completely been destroyed, but it did lose a lot of mass there. Oh, dear. Io being trashed. Right, how are we going on at Europa here? We need a bit more time here. Because... We've only had, we've only been running at minutes. Let's go a few hours. Let's start to see this warm up because we are in the red zone of this star here. So there we go. Let's just simulate time a bit. See how things play out. How are the other moons doing? Ganymede minus one twenty seven, Callisto minus one forty six. But we are in the red zone of this star, so it just takes a bit more time. We need the star to just cook things up a bit for us. So let's just continue. Let me slowly start to see these guys warm up. So there you go. How's Io doing? Is it still there? Five hundred degrees. Oh. Europa, 115. So, yeah, Europa, also too close to the star to really get anything good going. It's just too close. Red Dwarf, I mean... Oh, look at the flares coming out of that. That's pretty cool. There you go. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Light from two stars as well. So, you can see there's patches of water that have appeared. What's this uh, surface looking like? So, 170 on the highest. It has got some warmer points where water could be on the surface. The Galilean moons are all glowing hot as well. Oh, yeah. And we have got all the Jupiter's asteroid moons in here as well, for a little extra effect. Yeah, yeah, they won't have any changes because they're just asteroids. So, Europa's atmosphere is slowly building, so there are patches of water on it, but I doubt that's going to last for long. How are we doing at Ganymede, the next moon out? So, over here. A little further away, 52 degrees, okay. How long will that last? So, then Callisto. Let's go to Callisto over here. Probably the moon at the safest position. Maybe this will be a moon, minus 70 still. Will it warm up though, is the question. Can it hold on at the edge of that apple zone? So where are we? So it's yeah, it's still in the red though. So it, potentially, probably not. There you go. So let's continue. Actually, one thing we'll do as well. So we'll get all the moons' uh, details up here. So the temperature of all the moons. So there you go. Same with Europa. Same thing. But I just want the temperature gauge. So there you go. So we can watch all the moons at the same time. Ganymede. Same deal. There you go. You can see the high and low points of each moon. And then lastly, Callisto. Lock that in. Get rid of all this stuff. So we can purely focus on the temperature of these as we change now. So I Europa, Ganymede, Callisto. We already know your Io is too hot, so let's focus on the other three. So you see Europa's increasing, Ganymede 100. Callisto's the only cold one. But will it get enough to keep going and warm up? It's slowly but surely it's getting there with enough simulated time. So Ganymede and Europa are too hot as well. It's just too close to that red dwarf to really get it. Because these are a lot closer than Trappist-1 planets are, I think. So, and We can put Trappist in for comparison. So now Callisto, 10 degrees, 11, 12. How hot will Callisto go, though? So let's go ahead and view Callisto. There it is. Minus one average. Patches, that patches of water on the surface I see there, potentially. Has it got an atmosphere? It does. Okay. Atmosphere of Mars. ATM 0.07. But with enough time, maybe it can hold on. Ganymede, how are we doing over here? So, atmosphere of this. 0.1 AU or a, uh, ATM on it. So, there's patches of water on it. There you go. But the hottest point of Ganymede is the coldest point is going above zero as well. But I think Ganymede is just yeah, too close to that red dwarf to really, really get it. Look at how the light changes on this as well. You've got the normal sunlight and then Jupiter's light. Look at that. That is a really weird day-night cycle. I mean, let's just land on the surface here and get, uh, see what it's all about. So, there we go. Let's just turn all that all off. So, where's, where's the sun? Where's the sun? <laughs> okay, play. And then that, we see that. Oh, yeah, as we're going around pretty quickly. So, you've got your Jupiter star just constantly warming up all of this stuff. Oh, where are we going? Oi! Well, I guess we didn't want to... So, yes, let's try that again. All right, so, land on the surface. There we go. That's more like it. Press the space bar. So there's your Jupiter stun. Obviously, we're going. We're quite close. We're going around in hours, not days here. For full orbit. Well, it only takes a few days for a full year on it. So because these are full-on planets now, technically, since they're orbiting a star. There you go. Face it away from the sun at the moment. But yeah, the Jupiter star. Definitely, uh, definitely a sight to behold. There he is. Missed the sight of it. But where are we? There he is. Oh yeah. So pretty rapid. There you go. Okay, so 
Callisto, that's the, uh, the only hope around here. But I mean, the red, the radiation from that red dwarf would still be pretty wild. Let's just leave the particles. There we go. I think there was a collision there. Something's gone. Is that the rest of Io just got shredded? I think. I think we've lost Io. Yeah. So Jubes are creating the uh, definitely creating some rings there. <laughs> Poor old Io. Yeah, that's what's left of Io. <laughs> Does Io still exist? No, it's gone. Completely shredded. So with enough time, Io just got completely. <laughs> Ooh. So there's a lot of particles in there. Callisto, 1,000 degrees. I think the greenhouse effect kicked off on Callisto, didn't it? So it had all that carbon dioxide under that, and we saw that with the Red Giant Sun video as well. That Callisto just has a lot of carbon dioxide hidden under, or in Universe Sandbox, it gives it a lot of carbon dioxide. And as soon as that warms up too much, you get that global greenhouse effect, and it just ruins Callisto. Look at that, too hot now, the hottest of the bunch, I think. Yeah, Europa and Ganymede in the 300s. So I think what we can conclude, and they're all in the red zone as well. So what we can conclude here is that. The Jupiter, if Jupiter was a star, the Galilean moons would just be immediately uninhabitable once they really get going. Mercury, Venus-like worlds, not too much going on. I mean, Callisto, yeah, that got absolutely just... It, had, it, had, it was holding for a while, but as soon as we really got going, you can see Callisto just goes ultra hot. Europa as well, warming up. So they all just become miniature Venuses. All that... I mean, these worlds have a lot of water. I mean, more than the Earth. As soon as that water vapour all goes into the atmosphere, that is a killer greenhouse effect you've got going on there. So Jupiter, absolutely wreck them all. I mean, as for the asteroid objects of Jupiter, we'll close all that now. These guys are... The next closest moon is pretty far away. Minus 140 degrees. I mean, the furthest moon's over here. I need to view Jupiter from these little asteroids. Turn up all the goggles. That's what you're seeing. Two suns. Literally two suns. There you go. But this distance, though, the red dwarf is not providing much light. But we're on the asteroid surface here. And that's what you see. Two full-on stars in the uh, sky here. If we press play... Oh, that's way too quick. <laughs> this thing's spinning around as well. Oh, there you go. There's Jupiter. Trying to hold the camera. This thing is spinning really quickly. <laughs> All in the outskirts of Jupiter there. So, there you go. So, to conclude, Galileo moons around a red dwarf Jupiter just don't work. So, for comparison, like I said, so, we'll pop the Trappist-1 star next to it and just see the distance of these. So, where are we? Trappist-1... Trappist one. Uh, where are we? Maybe searching helps. Trappist one. So, there you go. So for comparison, if we were to plot Trappist one right there, so Trappist one's in here. The Trappist one B is roughly the distance of Callisto, and all the other Trappist planets are further out than Callisto. So, for comparison, the Galilean moons are really close to their little red dwarf i mean dangerously close so there you go so obviously if i press play it's all gonna blow up um but yeah there you are so trappist 1b cd they are way further away and if you look at the zones you know they're in a much more comfortable zone around the uh area there so due to trappist 1 merger here that's definitely gonna be i mean if we just we delete the trappist one actually let's see how the trappist planets hold around jupiter so let's go where are we oh i always get the wrong one it's tools right and then Auto orbit. So let's see how the Trappist planets survive around our red dwarf Jupiter and see if they can have any good conditions. That's probably going to upset the orbits a bit. So Trappist 1b is the closest. 125. Too hot. Trappist 1c. 64. Let's just let it run for a bit just so they can adapt to the simulation. There you go. So there, Trappist 1c is increasing. And we can plop an Earth around here as well and see how the Earth, how far the Earth would have to be. 17 degrees at Trappist 1d. That's a little more comfortable, isn't it? 80 at C. I think further out they'd be cold, wouldn't they? So it's only 1D and 1E, I think, are probably in the best positions. So, going by that, let's see if we can plonk an Earth in and see where Earth would sit. So let's try... Let's try around 1... Let's try there. How Would the Earth survive 7 degrees? Is that a little too much? Let's see how it runs. Again, this is way further out than Callisto's orbit. Okay, so I mean, Earth's sitting pretty reasonable there at the moment. 8 degrees, a little warmer. See how high it goes. 9, 10. If it sits around 10 to 15, I mean, that's roughly what you want, isn't it? The orbits are going to wobble with each other, though. 11. Still slowly increasing. A little, maybe a little too much. Maybe Earth does need a little further out. So let's go. So how far away is it? So it's 7 days, so... How was that in kilometres? Is that 4.5 million, I think that is. Okay. Let's go a little further out. Try and find that suitable condition for Earth. 15... 
15 ones are still a little too warm. A little further out. 17 days, that's way too much. <laughs> Ugh. Oh, wait. Yeah. Try there. 10 day orbit. So this, it cools down from 10 days. Okay, so it needs to be a little closer then. Let's try 9.5 days. So it still cools down a bit. Sitting around 11, so just finding that perfect sweet spot for Earth. 8.6. Warms up again. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, is that? Oh, that's roughly it, I think. 10, 11. Okay, so, and its orbit is slightly eccentric as well. So that's roughly where you want to be sitting is around 5 points, like 5.2 million, isn't it? Yeah, 5.2 million kilometers away from the red giant Jupiter. So again, look, compared to Callisto there... So that is only two days orbit. So that's sitting at, yeah, way smaller distance. Yeah, there you go. Cool. So there's a little comparison. But there's that little Jupiter moon experiment. And then look at the rest of the solar system. And yeah, you can see Saturn's orbit, like I said. Ceres is being stolen by Jupiter as well. So we have enough time. And we've done this before. But yeah, Jupiter as a star wrecks everything. It's pretty expected, isn't it? I mean, 79 Jupiter masses, the inner system will not last long for there. But there you go, everybody. So, what do you think of that little experiment? Yeah, the Galilean moons, they're just too damn close for any real uh, good conditions if Jupiter was ever to become a star. And yeah, if it was a star, well, we wouldn't even be here making this video for a start. But yeah, those moons, they would just be hot, airless rocks eventually. I'm sure their atmospheres and all that material would just get blown away. I mean, poor old Io just became a... Just got trashed instantly, didn't it? I mean, it just got Roosh Limit ring systemed. So I mean, we, did, we did delete the particles, but I mean, technically, you probably get something like this eventually. The uh, what was Io? You know, you may get a cheeky ring system out of it, kind of like Triton around Neptune or the Moon around Saturn that became its rings with the Roosh Limit. I mean, yeah, Io eventually probably would have just given you that. And look at the other little asteroid moons. I mean, they survive because they're so small anyway. But yeah, they're sitting right at the full power of the star here. I mean, they're, they're very close, aren't they? Metis, the closest moon to Jupiter there. So, there you go. But yeah, let me know what you think of that experiment down below in the comments, everybody. Hopefully you enjoyed this video as well. And yeah, let me know your thoughts and opinions down below in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, press that like button and also subscribe. Help us on the journey to 50,000 subscribers as we are within 2,000 subscribers. I think we're about 1.8 thousand left till we hit 50k. Our goal is to hit it by the end of the year. So if you haven't already, make sure to press that subscribe button. I really appreciate all your support, everyone. If you've got more potential ideas we could do, maybe we could try this with Saturn and Titan. That could be an interesting one. Um, let me know what you want to see um, in the comments. But with that all said and done, everybody, make sure you have a great day. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.